What's up guys, it's Archer here. Welcome back to our OOTP 19 franchise with the Kansas City Royals. Still July 13th, uh, and I figured I would start this episode off with a game played, um, because I didn't play one last time. And you know what? It made me kind of sad. So uh, we're going to play a game against the Twins here. We have to create a couple of pictures for the opposing team, because we have not faced off on them in this save yet. Uh, for your Kansas City Royals, your lineup is going to be Ely in center field, Panic at second base, Khalil Lee at right field, Baum at third, Rowdy Tellez at first, Zhao at left, Gigliotti at DH, Fernandez at catcher, and Jason Guzman at shortstop. Justice Sheffield going to be on the mound for us tonight. Hopefully he can give us a good start. He uh, has already faced Minnesota once this season. And uh, he had a 1.69 ERA that game. Should be a pretty good game as well. The Twins, not a bad team at all. Um, in theory, though, I think we're probably, you know, at least in terms of star power, a lot better than they are. Bit of a rotated lineup for us. Not our strongest, but um, going to have to try and get the job done, as it were. Justice Sheffield now up. And this one's going to be flied out into left field. Josh should be able to handle that easily. It moves into foul territory, actually, and he can't. Wow, that was... Certainly had some bend on it. Ooh, that actually counts as an error. So that'll give him four on the year. Not a huge number, but uh, obviously not ideal. So Dunn will get a second chance at life. Two strikes, one ball. We have a, a six-game winning streak on the line, of course. And I really should speed up the way that the uh, rolling commentary goes up here because, wow, that took ages. Alec Baum, though, gets it and an error. <sighs> Every time that I show a game, <laughs> has it ever gone well? It feels like maybe once it's gone well, and I just don't remember it. Oh, man. <sighs> ben Rortvet up, and this one is going to be slapped towards the first baseman. Easy out for Tellez. Runner does move to third, though, and that'll bring up Lucas Duda. We had Duda in our first year, of course. He's going to walk. Not a clean inning so far for Sheffield. Obviously not helped by his defense, but... Certainly not doing himself any favors. This could be two. It is not. Sheffield with a good bit of fielding there. I'll bring up uh, Byron Buxton. Buxton not having the best uh, of years. Had a much better year than the previous one. And um, he's not really developed into the star that I thought he might be, uh, both in real life and in the game. Bases loaded now after that walk to Buxton. Sheffield now facing up against Nick Gordon. The lefty's going to walk one in, and uh, that always hurts. That always hurts. Those unforced errors. And uh, he is also injured. Okay, well, at least it's just a day-to-day -day injury, but we're going to have to put in somebody with a good amount of stamina. Usually that would be Brad Keller. He's not really up for it, but we're going to try it. Why won't you be put in the game? Hello? Game, please? Okay, there we go. Uh, so still not out of the first inning. Our starter is out. We have the bases loaded. Thankfully, two outs. Strikeout. That is huge. So, a one nothing lead for them. And again, our offense, not super potent. So, you know, that's not a big lead, but really just being down at any point is not great for us. Ely slaps one into right field, though. This is going to be two bases at least, and that's going to be a stand-up double really easy. If not for the great defense of Buxton, that would have been easily a triple. That will bring up Joe Panic to face Ryan Weathers. Weathers, by the way, very good pitcher for the Twins. That one, though, is going to be handled easily by Judah, and um, 
Again, well, there's 2970 RA on the season for them. Facing up against Khalil Lee, lefty on lefty action. And, uh, well, usually for Khalil Lee, that doesn't go well. For Alex Baum, though, it usually goes a little bit better. Obviously, he has some platoon splits, and we've been trying to get him at bats against lefties, but uh, that one was pretty ugly. So that'll bring Brad Keller back up. Andrew Bechtold hitting 222 on the year. This one into right field, hopefully going to be caught, and it is. Khalil Lee with a decent play out there in right field. Jorge Polanco now up to face Keller, and he will strike out. Hopefully Keller can get us at least to the fifth. Right now he seems to be rolling pretty well. This one to the shortstop, and that's going to be another out. So a good throw there from Guzman to end the inning. Twins still up 1-0. And um, at this point, I think I'm going to go and tell runners in scoring position. Tellez does get on with a leadoff double, though, so we'll watch Zhao hit. Zhao having a bit of a down year, as are most of our offensive players. This one hit high, but not very deep into center field. Going to be handled easily by Buxton. No chance for Tellez to run, obviously. He is very slow. Giglotti, he gets a walk out of it. So that is at least something. Brings up Fernandez and then Guzman. Fernandez hits this one. This might not be catchable, and it is not. This could bring in two. No, Gigliotti going to stop at third. So that one was drilled to center. Brings in one. Now runners on second and third for Guzman. Jason Guzman, um, kind of a solid rotational player for us this year. I, I really like him. Wild pitch is going to score. Gigliotti, but yeah, Guzman has been uh, pretty valuable. He can't really hit very well, um, but I do think he's better than he showed as he sends one into the gap, and that is going to score another. So here we are, 3-1 now, and uh, Weather's still not with two outs in this inning. So like I said, Jason Guzman, just kind of a solid all-around guy, and um, you need those types of players that aren't spectacular, and he is going to make it all the way to third on this Ely single up the middle. That is really good base running there. Panic now up, one out, two on, and this one could be the end of the inning as that's going to be one and then two. So uh, that'll end the scoring there for us, but all in all, a good inning. And uh, we'll see if Brad Keller can get through a clean one. He cannot. Only gets one out before letting a man go to third base. I imagine that was probably a first-to-third move by Duda on the single by Kirilov. Byron Buxton now up to try and drive one in. He will strike out, though, so that leaves us with two outs now. Anything will do it. Nick Gordon hits this one right to the pitcher. Keller to first, and we are through the third for Kansas City. So let's move to the bottom of the third. Ryan Weathers, can he get a clean inning? He can. And now we're just looking to see if Keller can make it through another inning. I think that's probably going to be his maximum. Probably going to go batter by batter with him here. Strikes out the first batter he faces, though, Akil Badu. Now going to face Andrew Bechtold. This one hit to the shortstop, Guzman. Good play on it. Now at 38 pitches, tiring pretty fast. Just in case things go a little off the rails, I am going to warm up Liam Hendricks, who has not gotten some action in a while. This one, though, to the second baseman, Panic, to first, and that'll end the inning. So we will probably be bringing in Liam Hendricks at the start of the next inning. Yang Yi Zhao uh, can't get anything against Weathers, and neither can anyone else. Clean inning for him. Brad Keller's still up at this point, though. I feel like we're risking an injury the longer we keep him in. So we're going to put Liam Hendricks in at least for the fifth. Bit of a bullpen game for us today. Maybe he can go a couple. Gets done out on a strikeout and gets through the rest of the inning clean. So we're through five. And Ryan Weathers now is going to face Guzman, Ely, and Panic. Just for the fun of hopefully seeing Jerry and Ely hit one, we will go to his at bat, Jerry and Ely. Up to face Weathers, this one into the right field, 
And that is going to be off the wall. Another double this game for Jerry and Ely. Three at-bats, three hits for him today. Excellent work from him. And, uh, yeah, that'll help the average out a little bit. Uh, and the slugging percentage. Uh, now that we have a man on scoring position, we'll watch Panic as he grounds out to first. Dude is going to take it himself. Ely now on third, though, with Khalil Lee. Two outs, so anything will do it for the Twins. This one is going to be in the right field. Very weakly hit. And unfortunately for us, that ends the inning. Ely can't come home. But some solid hitting from him. Not awful work from everyone else. Uh, probably need to go batter by batter with Liam Hendricks. This one into right field. Ely not going to have a play on it. Goes off the wall, and this one's going to be a double. Great throw by Lee, but just not in time. Uh, good hit by Karloff. I believe that's the second time he's reached base today. And uh, now we're eyeing Liam Hendricks. Not a ton of people in our bullpen, though. He is going to strike out Fernandez, though. Or, excuse me, Buxton. <laughs> I said Fernandez. <laughs> Fernandez caught it, I guess. Uh, <laughs> this one into left field. Zhao may have a play at it very deep on the warning track. He does. Can't get the throw into third, though, so the runner will advance. And now Liam Hendricks in a high leverage situation with Badu up gets the walk, so I think that that is going to bring in Lawrence. Justin Lawrence going to come in. 27-year-old righty. And he is going to be facing the next Twins batter. Ely gets in on it. And that was a bit touch and go there for us in the sixth. But Ely, as always, with some stellar defensive play. And that will bring us back into the game proper. So, Steven Gonsalves is now in for the Twins. We'll see if he can get a clean inning in. And he can. Really hoping that Justin Lawrence can go two for us here. And he's off to a good start. Jorge Polanco strikes out. Nick Dunn. This one hit long and deep. It may not get out of here, though. Ely reaching back, and he's got it. Just in front of the warning track. And that'll bring up Ben Rortvet. Lawrence only on 15 pitches, so he should be able to handle this as this one hit into center field. Ely might have a play on it. He does. Makes it look easy, and that is not an easy play from there. So that's just excellent work there from him in center field, as he has been doing pretty much all year. Castro's been a bit overworked of late, but um, he's got the stamina for it. We're going to warm him up. And um, if Gonzalez gets through a clean bottom, he does not. So bottom of the seventh, a runner on second. Jason Guzman is going to walk. So he did end up holding up. So two on now for Jerry and Ely. Can he continue his excellent game against Blaine Enlow? He cannot. And in fact, this may be a very bad outcome. Not quite, but... Uh, He is going to give us another out, so Panic is going to need to drop this one in if we want to get any runs from it. He gets a walk, so we've got the bases loaded for Inlow. Khalil Lee up. These are the moments in which he should shine, make the pitcher pitch to him, and he does. And that's exactly what we're looking for, an insurance run going into the eighth. Alec Baum now up. Inlow a righty, so... Not the perfect matchup, and he is going to strike out. So the seventh comes to an end. Positive signs from our offense, though. And we move now to Luis Castro and the eighth inning. Maybe could have kept Lawrence in, but just didn't feel like taxing any one member of our bullpen harder than we had to uh, with Keller. Castro, of course, is a strikeout artist for us, 14 Ks per nine this season, but this one's going to be in the right field, and Lee makes a pretty good play on it. Alex Kirilov now up. Kirilov, one of the Twins' stars, 
a 13 OPS on the season this year, but playing a little below his potential. This one right to Castro. He'll kick to first. And we have out number two. Castro, a minuscule 141 ERA on the season. Byron Buxton now up. This one very weak, almost into the infield. And Guzman, nice little play on it. And that'll bring us to the bottom of the eighth, where we'll see if we can get anything. We can't. And that'll bring in our closer. Oh, I forgot to warm up like an idiot. You know what? I'm just going to leave Luis Castro in. He strikes him out. I don't believe it's a save situation anyway. Maybe it is. Is it two runs within two runs for a save situation? Or three? It doesn't matter. Saves are not a great stat. Uh, that one's going to be in the... Uh, hole in left infield for Bechtold, so we'll have one on for Luis Castro, and I'm just going to trust him with it. I'm not going to warm up Osuna. This one hit to the second baseman. He rewards my trust, and we get the win. Kansas City over Minnesota 4-1, to one. and some obviously good signs from that one, including Jerry and Ely picking up two doubles. Very happy about that. Unfortunately, Sheffield out with an injury um two things we could do here we could ask him to play through it it is minimal it doesn't even influence his throwing so probably shouldn't have any impact on anything or we could give blagden his first shot at the majors i feel like if it was oaks or whitley or dunn i would give blagden his shot but um since it's Sheffield, I think I'm going to just let him play through it. Is that a bad decision? I don't know. I don't think it is. Um, but nevertheless, we are going to move on now to the trade deadline, or at least very near it, probably the end of this Angels series here. And I am hoping to make a really good run at the playoffs this season. I think we need another bat. Um, you can look at our lineups sort by OPS, and we have one guy above eight. That just really doesn't cut it. Um, and we have some prospect capital to spend. Uh, Chapman and Murphy, two guys who were supposed to fix that problem last year, have, you know, in some ways helped. Um, but Chapman has kind of become the worst version of himself. Uh you know, slugging home runs, but not giving us anything else. Um, thankfully, his defense is amazing, so I can justify leaving him in the lineup. But other than that, it's not really a great time for any of us. Thames has not been good. Um, and in fact, he would be the first one out the door were I to uh, make a trade just because he doesn't hold any value for us. So that was one gamble that definitely didn't work out. Uh, so I'm going to go to the end of that Angels series, and uh, then we're going to take a look at some possible moves that we could make. Um, I will see you then. Right, guys, I'm actually going to stop it here. Uh, Justice Sheffield's injury status is now uncertain return date, so um, I actually am going to give Blagden a shot. I don't want this turning into anything more serious than we can deal with. Um, I'm just going to place him on the 10-day he needs to stay, or he can stay on there as long as he needs to, and that'll be fine. Blagden will be a fine option up to replace, hopefully, and um, usually it'll just put him on the secondary roster, but I guess the secondary roster is full. It is. Okay, who doesn't need to be here? Scott Blewett. That is definitely somebody that doesn't need to be there. There we go. All right, now Blagden can come up. Blagden is kind of an interesting case. He doesn't really have the change up yet, um, but we think it could be amazing. Uh, so it kind of flashes plus, if you will, um, in real baseball terms. Despite that, puts up pretty good numbers. And, um, you know, the PCL is um, where he's been residing is notoriously offense heavy. So it's possible that his numbers could improve uh, once he comes up. Think a la Noah Syndergaard um, back when he came up and everyone was all worried about, oh, he put up a pretty bad ERA last year. 
it just kind of happens. Uh, it's a really offensively tilted league, which is also why on the flip side, you know, uh, this is something I was thinking about earlier was if I was going to pull up a bat, I looked at Samir Dunez and I went, oh, his numbers in AAA are really nice. 301, 368, 457. But he's getting those in the PCL. So it's not really, it's just not as impactful. Um, and it definitely doesn't portend the same thing at the major league level um, as doing that in a different AAA scenario would. So um, after we move Blagden up, uh, I figure now is as good a time as any to start looking for a bat. Um, and the good thing is that it can kind of be from anywhere because we have a DH. Um, and yes, we've been rotating people in f for that, but we've been rotating in Michael Giglotti. And he's fine, I guess, um, but he's not somebody that I want to be starting there uh, in a DH spot. And um, by that same token, you know, it, it, there's not anybody immediately replaceable. Uh, Khalil Lee is maybe the guy that I would say is most replaceable alongside Panic. Tellez is having a great season, but, you know, they're maybe better first baseman out there. Uh, so, I mean, those guys are kind of on defense replaceable, but really we're just looking for plain and simple a bat. Just any bat, slot them in at the DH, forget about it, get offense, do not pass go, win a championship. I don't know. Uh, that's the plan. <laughs> but um, that's kind of what I'm going for here. Uh, I am going to... Do I want somebody that's been performing this year? I probably do. Um, so let's say that I want somebody who has an average above 260. And at this point, uh, let's set the plate appearances to at least 50. And has an on-base percentage of at least... Let's not even worry about it. Um... Well, I mean, it has to be like at least 300 through 20. That's like minimum. And this should give me a big list of people. Oh, I think I've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> My computer may be going for a while. So I'm going to be back um, when the options pop up, and then we'll talk about them. All right, guys, so the list has loaded, uh, and now we get to take a look at them. I think just by process of elimination I'm not going to be trading for anybody that's like five stars so like an Acuna and Albies that's just out of the question but I'll take a look at some guy like Pavin Smith not really what I'm looking for but you know maybe kind of in the area Dalton Varsho isn't that valuable for us because I feel like we have a catcher and his offense is good um, but from somebody that can't play catcher you know, if if you're just looking at him as a DH, he's not as valuable, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Marcus Wilson doesn't really fit the mold I was thinking about. Domingo Santana kind of does, and he's been showing out this season fairly consistent over the course of this save. Good home run power, pretty good discipline, does strike out a fair bit. Not great speed. Santana's definitely a, a sort of by middle option. I imagine though that Atlanta like him and that he they're in like a playoff hunt. Uh yeah, they kind of are. They're maybe a little too close to be selling off a piece like that. Lamar Sparks, not major league proven, uh although some good skills. Nobody from here. Yeah, I, I didn't figure. Uh, I believe the Cubs are also in a battle for the division. Victor Caratini. Now, this would not go over well uh, if we were to trade either from the White Sox or the White Sox were to um, even consider trading with us. So that's probably just better not spoken about. Uh, Nick Madrigal is not somebody I'm interested in. Neither is Jake McCarthy from the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, neither Votto or Winker, really. Uh, again, Cleveland, same thing with uh, Chicago. Trading within the division, it would have to be 
blow your mind spectacular for both sides. David Dahl uh, has his name numbers inflated by Colorado, but could be a good option. If we take a look at where Colorado is in the league, they are rock bottom, so it stands to reason that they may be able to send somebody my way. I guess the guy that you would want is David Dahl, but to be quite honest with you, he's not that appealing. He's maybe like slightly better than Domingo Santana, but also he's fragile, uh, as you can see right there. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not hugely into it. Nomar Mazzara from Detroit. I mean, Detroit are far enough out of it that maybe they'd trade us somebody. And Mazzara kind of fits the bill. He's on a huge contract, though, right? 16 million? Ooh, that ramps up. 16, 17, 20, 21. I mean, if I could get him to keep a little bit of it, I mean, this is the guy, right? Great bat. Don't need to play him in the field except sparingly. Like if we were to go up against an NL team in the playoffs. We could maybe fit him into the field over Lee every once in a while. That's a lot of money to spend on a DH, though. And to be honest with you, I feel like he would take a huge prospect haul because he's in division. But he's definitely target number one for now. Uh, no mistake about that. I want to go... Nope, that's not what I wanted to click. <laughs> now, this is going to... Okay. Troy Montgomery, just a worse no Marmazar who can play defense, for us at least. Um... Astros are in a playoff hunt. They wouldn't trade anybody to us. The Jacksonville Diamond Cats, that's a nice catcher, but not what I need. Guillaume is uh, a nice piece, I guess, but not what I need. They're not going to trade me Lockhart, or if they did, they'd be really dumb to do so. So here's a, a bad thing. Um, <laughs> the only person listed for us is Tellez. And when you look at like how many people the Astros have, you can start to tell why this is an issue and granted our pitching is amazing so we don't have to hit like that but when it comes down to it in October you can tell that we definitely need another bat or two or three um, but I'm just going to add one for now because I just feel like at worst we are you know going to add a bat and then not do too great in the playoffs, sacrifice a couple of prospects, and then come back stronger the next year. Um, but if I go like all out and I sacrifice a ton of prospect talent, then, I mean, there's no telling. You know, I, we could set ourselves back immensely. Uh, Brett Phillips is having a nice year, but I don't think he's any better than Doming that sort of like Domingo Santana tier is, I guess, what I'll call it. Um, Dominic Smith... Uh, good first baseman. Uh, not a lot else to say about that. Nowhere we could really fit him into the field if we needed to, though. I don't think we really need to. Again, he's he's good. He's maybe a step above Domingo Santana, just a touch. But his, you know, leg up is that he can play defense, maybe. I mean, that kind of seems like his leg up, and we don't. The only place he can play is somewhere we're never going to play him is first base. So that just seems like a bit of a waste. Uh, Yankees wouldn't trade anybody to us. Uh, we, I believe, won that trade with the Athletics pretty recently, so I don't imagine they'd want to go down that road again. Jorge Polanco is not as good as he used to be. Cole Tucker is not great. Uh, Austin Meadows is is pretty good. He's more of a defensively oriented player, though. The Padres, Tatis Jr., they would be so dumb to give him up. And I just, I don't even want to think about what I'd have to give up to make them do that.
Where did you come from, Edward Olivares? Wow, back in 2014, an international free agent for the Blue Jays. Oh, this is the guy in the Yen Jervis Solarte trade. Oh, wow. And he's developed all the way to here. That is really interesting. I mean, they would be insane to give you up because you're, well, you're 26. But I mean, come on. He's, he's very good. Um, and granted, though, are the San Diego Padres really bad? Because if the San Diego Padres are really bad, well, they're 14 and a half games out of the division. So what's their core? Their core is Tatis Jr., Rosario, Turang, and they have some aging guys who don't really factor in. Juan Fernandez, I guess. Mackenzie Gore, who is awesome, by the way, um, both in real life and in the game. So I guess it would make sense to trade him. So let's call him 1B to, uh, yeah, so 1A and 1B, um, just because he's going to cost more prospect talent, I think. So 1A, Nomar Mazar, 1B, Edward Olivares. That's, that's pretty good that we've found two options that we like. Because that is definitely not always the case. Uh, Joe Rizzo is nice. I think he is probably our third option. He's just very well rounded. Mm -hmm. Do I like him more than like maybe just like a little more than the Domingo Santana tier that we put a bunch of other guys in? Jesus Armando Sanchez, I would love to get, but I mean, come on, talk about a pipe dream. Uh, Willie Calhoun? Nah. It's that, uh, it's that Santana tier, man. <laughs> Carter Kaiboom? No. No. Trey Turner? No. Okay. So let's go after, uh, Mazzara first, shall we? Might just be easier to type his name in. So let's see if we can trade for him so in terms of prospects who's untouchable for us Blagden because it's really difficult to develop pitchers who make it to the majors Bitsko because he's developing okay and also he's a 20 year old 5 star pitcher other than that Not really anybody. I mean, I, I can see a scenario where I would trade pretty much everybody else. It's difficult for me to see it, but I can see it. JP Gates has been performing well. He may be able to be the centerpiece of this deal. If I can click on him. Thank you, game. Okay, then that's just the starting point, obviously. We are going to have to go deeper into the farm system if we really want him. So, the names I'm seeing here makes me think that if I go with somebody like a Gilberto Celestino type, perhaps we could add a third player in and then we'll be done? No, not quite. Okay, so that didn't actually seem to help anything. Uh, do people still like Arturo Meneses? Oh, he has to think about it. Do I still like Arturo Meneses? Yes, but not, I mean, not that much. Okay, so he would have to think about J.P. Gates and Arturo Meneses for Nomar Mazzara. It's really hard for me to give up on J.P. Gates. Oh, uh, I really like him. I do feel like in the end, though, he's a number two starter. Hey, I, I don't think he has ace potential. So, um... 
Yeah, I, I think that I'm I'm kind of okay with that. Manessis hurts a little bit as well. But I, I kind of like that. Let's see what um, San Diego is willing to do for Olivares. Because if anything, they should maybe want a little bit less, is my thought process. Because he, um, well, for one thing, they're not in our division. Oh, I didn't even think. I, I need to go back to Detroit because I need them to take some of that money. Damn, 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 damn. Okay. Uh, let's see. If they took $2 million off, that would be $18 million a year. At the end of the deal, I really only want to be paying like 15 or 16 So somewhere in like this neighborhood. And that would mean we would have to add in definitely another player. Ooh, kind of another good one as well. Yeah, they're not happy about that. Okay, what about like 20? 20%. Keep 20% of his contract. What if we ate into our cash a little bit? But made the contract more affordable? So let's say like they keep 30 and we give them just a lump sum of what would be a good number like 12 million does that work uh, okay it kind of does we would need to give up Erard Gonzalez who looks a lot like Arturo Meneses to be honest with you discount Arturo Meneses okay so that's not that's not bad for us. And that's workable, I think. Would we be saving more over the course of that? Yeah, we would. Okay. I just want to make sure I wasn't giving up more than I was saving long term. Okay, Edward Olivares. Don't need to have you retain any of his salary. Now let's see if the same package works for them. It's not quite enough. Okay, it looks like I'm going to have a choice to make. Never trade the pitcher. Always trade the old center fielder in double A. Okay, so I have a trade that works right now with the Padres. And I also have a trade that works right now with the Tigers. Which, as you can imagine, presents a bit of a difficulty for me. Uh, <laughs> because now I have to figure out which one of them is better and I don't really want to do that so um, I guess the easiest way to do that is just to compare him to the other alright so if you look at their batting ratings very clearly advantage Mazar on contact that's good I like it great Clear advantage to Olivares on power. We do need power. Uh, Mazzara has him on gap power pretty easily. Olivares has him on I and avoid. K's goes to Mazzara. So overall, I'm seeing kind of Mazzara. Mazzara does have a pretty bad platoon split, though. Is that true? Uh, hold on, I was looking at potential. So versus lefties, Olivares basically is Barry Bonds, and that's not true. Uh, but versus righties, Mazzara is amazing, and uh, Olivares is still very good. Mazzara is a lefty bat, and... We do really kind of want a lefty bat to balance out the lineup. Um, we're comparing, let's just see if we can do by age, comparable players. That didn't work out very well. So no more Mazzara is like a Josh Hamilton type, which let's just say that last time he was traded, that didn't go well. Uh, a couple of people I noticed, Benintendi, 
Conforto's up there now. Conforto, oh my lord, look at his ratings. Wow, has he developed. Um, whereas Olivares, the comparisons don't matter very much because he's a younger player. He is one year younger. He has a much smaller contract. Oh, I want them both, but I can't have them both unless I trade Khalil Lee for Olivares. Is that something that I should do? Am I even considering that? Uh, all right, I'm going to... I'm just going to have a think. Uh, so I'm going to leave you here, and I'm going to come back when I've thought this out a little, because I, I really am just going to have to sit down with this and just think for, like, <laughs> way too long, because I care too much about the decisions I make. Um, but I will be back when I have reached a decision. Right, I've been agonizing over this. Here's one thing I know that's happening. I'm making this trade for no Marmazara. And uh, one thing I haven't checked. Right, so he, he wants me to just submit it. I'm fine with that. If anything, that gives me a chance to change my mind, which is dangerous, Al Avila. You may not want to do that. Um, but I'm definitely submitting this offer. It's done. It's happening. The thing I want to show you, though, is that... AJ Preller will do Edward Olivares for Khalil Lee just straight up. He'll just do it. Which brings me to two lines of thinking. One is that Olivares is a better player for what we need right now. However, he's two years older. Khalil Lee is possibly arbitration eligible. Olivares is definitely arbitration eligible. So there's definitely, there's a difference there. The second line of thinking, however, because it's very difficult to decide between the two of them, is maybe we get rid of Zhao? Which sounds crazy, but hear me out. As good as he is at 23, he's not getting any better. So I don't want to anybody thinking that he's going to improve he's only two and a half star player he doesn't hit very well and while he's really good in the field and we super appreciate that because again one of the things that I wanted to do was be good at defense and that's what we are that's kind of our identity I wonder if we don't even maybe even get rid of him maybe we just move him to the bench and have him rotate in as a left fielder or something. Which then means that the guy that we're trading is Michael Giglotti. And now we have to find a package for him. I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> I've thought about this for so long and I can't come to a decision. So I'm just going to keep looking through, like, prospect packages and see if I find something that just catches my eye and says, yeah, this is what we should do. Uh, who's somebody that I could trade? Lucas Gordon? Uh, drafted in 2020. Yeah, I could trade him. Number two starter upside alongside Gigliotti. And then uh, Michael Doolin, who we don't care about that much, right? I mean, granted, he was the fourth overall pick, which always, you know, you don't want to trade that, but he's been bad. So, whoops. <laughs> um, maybe we could do it for somebody less painful. Oh, Quan, excellent. Stephen Quan. People love them some Stephen Quan, and I can see why. He uh, reminds me a little bit of a certain left fielder we have on the team right now. Okay, so Giglotti, Gordon, Quan for Olivares, which means that our outfield would then be 
probably Lee in left, Olivar is in right, Mazzara DHing. Those three rotate when necessary. You know what? Go big or go home, am I right? Oh, that felt awful. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry that you had to watch me struggle my way through that decision. <laughs> but it's made now. I can't take it back. Um, waivers in DFA. No, that's not what I wanted. Uh, that is... Hold on. Uh, there we go. Uh, who? Which one of you can... I guess while we're waiting for one of them to be able to play left field, we can just... So for now, we have Olivar is in right and Lee DHing. That seems like it should be the other way around, right? Because Lee's better in the field. My bench coach is sometimes not the smartest. Okay. So that's what we're going with for now. Uh, I'll see if the Nomar Mazar trade comes back positive. Hopefully it does. And uh, then what we're going to do is try and make a push into August and I will check and see if I have time for a game left I did a lot of uh, mostly just sighing into the microphone <laughs> as I couldn't make a decision so uh, we'll, we'll see if I have time for that but uh, at the very least we're going to go uh, into somewhere into August and see where the playoff race is then but uh, I'll be back if I have any news on the Mazzara trade alright guys deal's been accepted Deal's been completed. And the fans love it. And I, I promise that I do too. <laughs> what have I done? Oh, I hope I just haven't messed everything up, but I'm 80% sure that I just really improved my team. Uh, somebody needs to come off the roster. Sorry, Thames. Hadn't worked out for us this season, man. Mazzara, welcome to the team. Hope you enjoy your stay. Uh, I'm expecting big things now. And uh, he slots into left, so that's not... That's not how I expected that to go. Um, if I set your position as left field, will the game then recognize how dumb it's being? Oh, you're actually not a very good left fielder. I mean, you'll get better if you play there. <sighs> Which I'm going to have to lock you to it now because you're going to have to get better by the end of the playoffs. Uh, player strategy, set game strategy. Four start use at position left field so that the bench coach will always start him in that position, barring injury or something. And uh, that pretty much gives us the lineup that we want. Uh, I'm going to check time real quick, and then I will be back sometime in August to uh, see how the new acquisitions are doing. <laughs> uh, really quick, I just thought this was funny. Um, so we had somebody picked in the Rule 5 draft. Um, he went to Boston, proceeded to hit 165. And uh, then they you know, sent him back because he was awful. <laughs> and because he's now like on waivers for us he counts as on our team and so I got a message about how players appreciate the new leadership of Nick Ward and I was like who is I didn't get this guy um but apparently the players are really happy about having him pass through for like half a day but um I hope they enjoyed it while it happened because he's gone uh, one big trade to talk about as well, Eloy Jimenez got traded to the Miami Marlins, so uh, Chicago kind of blown it up a little, which is surprising because they're doing real well, um, but they got back Josh Trimper in his stead, who is a weird starting pitcher and maybe shouldn't even be one, uh, and also Reese Albert, who's kind of just a prospect. Uh, they also sent Greg Rowden in the deal, who is, again, just kind of a eh prospect. 
but yeah, that was a big one. Um, nothing else really to speak of, and uh, it looks like we'll have time for just about one game. By the way, Olivares, Mazzara crushing the ball while they have been here. So uh, early returns on that makes me look pretty smart. Uh, so let's go till uh, August, and I'll see you then. More good news, Justice Sheffield off the DL, and uh, looks like now we could really get rolling as we uh, steamroll into August. Well, everything couldn't go right. Uh, big blow for us, Roberto Osuna, elbow tendonitis, six to seven weeks. Granted, he wasn't having an amazing season, but he's just been that really solid guy that we knew was going to be there at the back of the bullpen. I'm going to put him on the 60-day DL. Bring up Matt Bridges from AAA. Thankfully, we have somewhat of a replacement for him, but certainly not something we're happy to see. Everything else, though, pretty great. Um, Edward Olivares is hitting almost 500 with us <laughs> through 20 games. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's just uh, that's just crazy. It's stupid, um, but I love it. So yeah, uh, that's happened. Um, meanwhile, Nomar Mazzara has hit, uh, in comparison, an awful 271. Um, but he's been on base 411, uh, and he has a 627 slugging percentage. So he's been pretty awesome. Defense hasn't seemed to slip very much at all, if at all. Um, we are 77 and 44, leading the division by nine games, even over. A surging Minnesota Twins team. Um, I mean, everything's going pretty great. Uh, and if we look at our news, um, Kansas City had a best pitcher selected for July. That was Forrest Whitley. He had a 272 ERA in those 39 innings. Um, he has a 375 right now. A little bit of wrist soreness going on at the moment, but. He's a very good pitcher, and I think that um, he's going to be an asset, especially come playoff time, as long as he can stay healthy, which is the big thing for us, really, is just health at this point, um, because we have a lot of players who are kind of yeah, shaky. Um, the other piece of news is that Manny Machado hit 300 home runs on the season, on the season, uh, for his career, obviously, and... Um, I might as well show you the rest of these uh, player of the month things. Jordan Alvarez for Houston, who I believe early on in the series I had a chance to get and regrettably didn't. Uh, Miguel Sano for Milwaukee. Durbin Feltman for Milwaukee. Milwaukee must be having a pretty good year, huh? Uh, Arredondo for the Blue Jays. He's been quite nice. Probably could have used his bat, to be quite honest, but uh, we didn't. Go get him, so that's that. Uh, I'm actually much more happy with Mazzara and Olivares, even with the prospects that we gave up for them. So, what are you going to do? Uh, in the meantime, uh, I have chosen this. Uh, where are they? Seattle series. Because I think it'll be a um, pretty easy win for us. I'm not going to lie. I, I just wanted to have an easy win. Uh, and I wanted to see how many home runs we could hit against him. So um, we're going to go to the Seattle game, and then I am going to uh, hopefully have some fun with you while we play it. Um, and then that'll be the episode. All right, we went uh, one more day than I had planned on because I wanted to face a righty. Um, and so we will be doing just that. 83 and 47, easily, easily the best team that we've had in Kansas City so far and if we look at our history as well in terms of winning percentage this is the best team they've had since oh and I saw a six in there somewhere real far back um, since 1977 and even then the 1977 team was worse than we are so if we keep on this pace, we will be, by winning percentage at least, obviously not by results, but by winning percentage, the best team in Kansas City history. So that would be, you know, nice. <laughs> Make me feel good. 
Um, Olivares has now cooled down to hit a, uh, oh yeah, still 400, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, Nomar Mazara is hitting 314, 427, 640, so he's just being, I mean, he's being Nomar Mazara is, is what's happening here. Um, nobody else has really picked it up except for Jerry and Ely. He had a good month last month. Um, he has a bit of a, a shoulder strain going on right now, though. Thankfully, it only influences his throwing, and at that point, only moderately even, so... Let's go ahead and uh, get into this game against Seattle. Hopefully we will have ourselves a good one today. Um, one thing I do want to talk about before we get into it is uh, how you want me to handle the playoffs. Um, because it looks like it would take a miracle for us not to get into the playoffs at this point. Um, so do you want me to play every game? Um, do you want me to play only you know, series clinchers or only... Um, you know, World Series games or, you know, just whatever it is, let me know down in the comments um, because we've not been to the playoffs before, uh, so I really don't know uh, exactly how to handle it, but um, I'm thinking that we will probably be playing for at least the first series, only, you know, games where the series is on the line. And then maybe just go from there. Um, but uh, again, it's all kind of up in the air at this point. Uh, I'm going to change our lineups around a little bit because uh, I want Jerry and Ely in at center field, which means he's going to move up to Khalil Lee's spot. Lee has been cold lately, um, and I'm going to move Tellez actually into the two spot. Is that what I want? No, I want, uh, I still want Khalil Lee in the two spot, and then I'll want uh, to flip those two around. So there we go, that's a good lineup. Kyle Wright on the mound for us, uh, obviously a great pickup in the offseason from Baltimore, 305 ERA to this point, um, very happy with him. So, lineup for today's game, Ely in center. Lee in left, Olivares in right, Mazzara at DH, two big additions hitting back-to-back, -back. Tellez at first, Baum at third, Guzman at second, Murphy at catcher, Simmons at shortstop, and right on the mound. Do we want to see Matt Chapman, too? I feel like we want to see Matt Chapman. Let's just... There we go. That makes everybody feel a little better, right? So, into the game we go, and... Um, Again, this should be a team that's very easy to beat for us, but you never know how that goes in baseball. Um, we are at Kauffman Stadium. Offense a little bit harder to come by, uh, obviously, in Kauffman with that enormous outfield that they have, uh, which should help Kyle Wright uh, and hopefully shouldn't hurt us too much on the offensive side. Kyle Wright with a good strikeout to start off the game. Quick four pitch strikeout looks like five pitch strikeout excuse me Dorian up he's gonna hit this one into center field but uh, there's Jerry and Ely for you coming way in to make that play not even a diving play for him Alfredo de Spain up All right sorry for the interruption guys uh, I had a phone call I had to take and uh, <laughs> I can't really say anything else about it uh, but a business call uh, I can say that so, um, Jerry and Ely is, uh, gonna face up against, um, I'm gonna assume that that's LJ Newsom, LJ Newsom, Olja, LJ, I don't know, I, I tried. Anyway, he's gonna face off against Jerry and Ely to start the bottom of the first inning for us. And that one is going to be caught by the center fielder if he gets there, and he will. A little floater towards center field, and uh, their center fielder with an amazing name, Frankie Tostado, goes out and grabs it. And that brings up Khalil Lee. I'm going to go and see if we can get Olivares and Mazzara in this inning. Looks like we may only get to one of two as this one's hit straight towards the right fielder. So we will see at least Edward Olivares up against Newsom. And that is some loud contact, but a grounder into center field, and we are going to see both. So, Norman Mazar, our first look at him 
in a Kansas City Royals uniform with Olivares on base. This one stopped well by the shortstop, but not going to be enough. And I think that that's not going to be an error, just going to be an um, infield hit. Newsom has been injured, and uh, now Ty Madden's going to have to come into the game. Ty Madden has some pretty good stuff. Five innings on the season for him, giving up two earned runs for a 360 ERA. Throws 96 to 98 miles per hour, and uh, we will be facing off against him with Rowdy Tellez. Two men on base right now. And he will walk the first batter, not the greatest control does Madden have. Six walks in five innings now on the season for him. Matt Chapman now up to bat, and Matt Chapman strikes out looking with the bases loaded. Nothing there for Kansas City in the first inning. And we are going to see if Kyle Wright can get through a clean inning. He can. We'll see if Ty Madden can match him, and he does. And uh, Kyle Wright, however, runs into a little bit of trouble in the top of the third. And this one is hit into left field. That's a ball that you feel like Zhao might have gotten to, but uh, Lee cannot quite get to, unfortunately. Uh, so we are going to have a runner on third and first. Two hits now for Seattle in the game. Frankie Tostado up to bat. This one roped into center field. Ely cannot get there in time, and we are going to have runners second and third. No, he's going to come home. Raleigh scores, and Hernandez scores as well. Mariners grab the lead 2-0, and what was looking like an easy win now looking pretty difficult. This one hit into left field, and Kyle Wright really laboring out there, and uh, you don't have to take him out yet, but... Things not looking great for him. Hopefully he can settle down with this next batter, Alfredo de Spain. Unfortunately, he's in kind of the heart of this lineup right now. Not a place where he can take a reprieve and settle down. And he drills de Spain with a fastball. Uh, and we're going to get somebody warmed up. Who should we get warmed up? Uh, I mean, I guess Brad Keller. He's not particularly fit, but... He might have to go for it. Wright does get one strike out here, so he has his first out. Unfortunately, he walks the bases loaded. And uh, Brad Keller still not ready, though, so we're going to have him go up against Joe Rizzo. And he walks one home, and that's uh, i got to say that's probably the end of his night. Uh, Keller is ready. Wright has thrown 52 pitches. I'm going to give him one more batter, but if this is anything other than a strikeout, he's going out. That seemed to work out for him. Again, same same ultimatum. All right, he's out. That's too much for me. Uh, not today. Not today, Kyle Wright. Other days I may have stuck with you, but... I got people at home watching, Kyle. You, you got to show up for them. Of course, Brad Keller walks one home. Oh, what have I done? Oh, full count walk as well. Uh, and this one's going to be a hit. Oh, through the gap. Please don't bring in two. Oh, I brought in two. Oh, thankfully this one looks like it's going to end the inning with a fly out to Olivares, but an eight spot for Seattle in the top of the third. Just disgusting. Really just awful. Oh, man. Jerry Neely now up. He strikes out, and, uh, well, I was just going to go and tell runners in scoring position there, but now I will. And a clean inning at the bottom for Madden. Brad Keller can't even get a single out before getting a double, giving up a double. Our bullpen looks pretty taxed. I might have to bring somebody extra up. Keller to the shortstop. And the throw by Simmons is good. So we will get our first out. And this one in the hole looks like Ely may be able to hold the runner with his great arm, and he does. Doesn't hurt that it's Vogelbach. 
This one's going to be into left field. Runner tags up on third, and he's going to stay there, so Khalil Lee does hold him. Keller might get out of this one, and he does. Not exactly clean, though, as he gives up another run. Take a look at a Nomar Mazzara at bat. This one weakly hit into right field. And uh, i got to say, viewers, I'm feeling like, uh, like the cockiness really, uh, really came into play here. The game was listening to me. It said, uh, huh, you, you think you have an easy win? Look at this. We're going to make you give up eight runs in the third. And then the reliever that comes in is going to give up two leadoff singles because the world hates you and baseball's really hard. Okay, Justin Lawrence gets an infield pop-up to end the inning. Oh, man. Wow, that is garbage. Uh, can we get anything here? We cannot. Can we get through a clean inning? Once again, the answer is no. Unbelievable. We walk one. This is just a disaster. All right, I'm going to warm up Mendez. We get a strikeout, so that's our first out of the inning. Can we get something else? Wow. Is this, is this enjoyable to watch? I'm sincerely curious. Do you guys enjoy watching my team implode while I just... <laughs> oh, why? <laughs> oh, man. I'm putting in Mendez. This is just too painful. I might even just sim half inning. Because I just can't do it. Davy Mendez. This one might be two. Oh, it's not. Do you guys remember when we were bad and we were rebuilding and this stuff was funny and it didn't hurt that bad when your reliever walked the bases loaded while you were down 11 to nothing and you just kind of laughed? I'm not laughing anymore. It, it hurts. Ely thankfully gets the last out of that inning and good lord. Uh, we'll watch Ely again because he's generally fun. Nope, that's going to fly out. Okay, great. Good play by Tostado there. The name's not even fun anymore. How annoying is that? Bridges is ready, so first sign of trouble from Mendez, and he's coming out. Everybody say goodbye to our good friend Davey Mendez. Here comes Matt Bridges. Yay. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, thankfully he strikes out the last batter. Okay, no more Mazzara. He gets a hit and makes me feel slightly better. Uh, almost gets thrown out in the second, but he doesn't, thank goodness. So Mazzara gets a double which means we have a man on in scoring position. Rowdy Tellez is going to go to first base on a check swing. Matt Chapman hits one straight to the third baseman, and that's going to turn two. <sighs> yep. And Guzman strikes out because baseball is pain. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Oh, it was all going so well. Oh, we have a really good team. I swear we have a really good team. I know you're not seeing it, but I swear we have a really good team. <laughs> Please don't tell me that's going to go out of the ballpark. Okay, Lee makes the catch. Bridges, can you get through a clean inning? No, you can't.
just, I mean, really. Also, I, can I up the play-by-play -play speed? There we go. Thankfully, that's going to be another empty frame for Seattle. Not that it matters at this point, by the way. Go to runners in scoring position. We get, oh, we got a uh, double by Simmons that brought in Murphy. Nice. We have a run, so we're not getting shut out anymore. And um, I wouldn't say that's all that matters, but it's nice. Ely brings in Simmons. So, you know, now we have two runs, which is more than zero. Objectively, that is how math works. Khalil Lee strikes out. Olivares, can we get something big out of our new acquisition? Of course we can't. No, that would have been too storybook. Okay, so he's out. Two outs in the inning. Didn't even get the runner advanced from that, not that it matters. And Nomar Mazzara is going to ground out to the pitcher, of all people. So, 11-2, to two, in case you're wondering. Matt Bridges is dead tired. The only person that should be pitching in this game is Richard Lovelady, and even then it's questionable. <sighs> Seattle gets two on because Matt Bridges should not be pitching, and I accidentally press next batter. Uh, he might get two out of it, though. Matt Bridges, you hero. I'm going to let him go for it. Why not? Okay, well, that was a poor decision. I'm going to bring in Lovelady now. Okay, Richard Lovelady. The runner goes. Great throw by uh, Murphy, but unfortunately it was on a curveball from Richard Lovelady, so wasn't able to get the ball in time to get him out. That's going to be more runners in for Seattle. 13 to 2. 13 to 2. Richard, thank you. Okay, so, you know, if we can just score 11 runs in an inning, we could tie it. So, I mean, that could happen, right? <laughs> oh, tell us is out. Chapman is out. Oh, that's not a fun way to get out. And Jason Guzman strikes out. 13 to 2. Let's leave that game as quickly as possible. Best thing about that game was that we didn't have any injuries. So that was all. That's the only thing. What is our run differential now? 615 to 469. So, um,. 136, I believe, is our run differential right now. That's still very good, um, but obviously not as good as it would have been if we had won or even lost by less than as many runs as we lost by. So um, on that cheerful note... <laughs> Uh, I, I'm going to leave this episode here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please leave your feedback in the comments section below. Let me know if you liked the trades. Um, let me know how you want to see the playoffs, um, because despite how badly we played in that game, we are definitely going to make the playoffs. I mean, probably, because you should never say definitely in baseball. It looks like we're almost certainly going to make the playoffs, so let me know how you want those seen, um, even if a miracle happens, uh, just so I know for whenever we do get to the playoffs. And then thirdly, guys, um, just uh, if you like the video, try and leave it a like, um, or uh, you know, just say hi down in the comments section. I'm around. I, uh, I like hearing from you guys. So uh, that's going to be the episode. Please subscribe if you liked what you're seeing. I can bring you more of it. And uh, I will see you guys on the next episode where hopefully we will be in the playoffs. See you then.